Well, everyone, welcome back to Chapter 6, and today we're going to look at courage and moral leadership. Yesterday you saw how Enron uh, played a major role in really how we discuss ethics and morality today in the workplace. So let's move a little bit forward and take a look at what the chapter has to say about these concepts. Now, the ethical climate in business. Leaders face pressures that challenge their ability to do the right thing. And when you take a look at it, there are profound obstacles and challenges that leaders have to face. They have to make sure they are producing. They have to make a profit. They have to be efficient and effective. And oftentimes that puts undue pressure on the leader to perform no matter what. And some who may not have as strong a moral foundation as others uh, may resort to unethical or immoral type of behavior. And some of those obstacles that pose a threat to leaders is personal weakness and self-interest. Some are just weak. I, I know there's a lot of times when I've been faced with gray areas and I want to um, make sure that I'm looking out for the company's best interest and so forth. But I know as a Christian that the decisions that I make are going to set the stage for future decisions. So if I'm facing a dilemma, uh, do I act as a uh, team player, uh, a leader that's going to uh, make decisions to benefit the organization? Uh, is that going to take priority over me being a Christian? and doing what is uh, uh, spiritually correct, ethically right, and morally um, uh, acceptable. So, and those things are going to, f you're going to be faced with that uh, from here on out. Even in ministry, we see today pastors and ministers who are falling by the wayside because they are um, falling into sin, they are taking the temptations and not handling it in a godly manner, and they get themselves in trouble. Unfortunately, they bring down the rest of the ministers and the ministries as well. But there's pressures to cut costs and increase profits, meet the demands of vendors or business partners and look successful, and to please shareholders. All of these are um, pivotal. You have to be able to meet these uh standards or you're not going to be in, in business for very long. So sometimes you may feel like no matter what I do, I'm, I'm doomed. Uh, and that's where we have to trust in the Lord. And I've had to do it again several times in uh, my career. And the Lord has always brought me through. So even though there are pressures as Christians, we don't have to conform to it. And unfortunately, today, this is why we have ethical uh, classes, classes on ethics and morality in the workplace. And it's a needed uh, course. These are needed uh, uh, instructions because many people today have just lost their way. Now, leaders set the ethical tone. They act as positive role models. They signal what matters by their behaviors. They focus on the employees, the customers, and the greater good. It's these ideas and these focuses are not mutually exclusive. Uh, you can take care of the employee, uh, the customers, and the greater good. Uh, but you can't do it if you are weak or if you are putting self-interest in front of everything else. Uh, not paying attention to gaining benefits themselves and honesty with employees, partners, customers, vendors, and shareholders. Uh, transparency is important. And today, because of unethical practices, uh, companies have to be transparent. It's not a matter anymore of just being a nice sentiment. They're legally bound to be transparent and to be honest with um, these uh, stakeholders. They strive for fairness and honor agreements, share the credit for successes, and accept the blame when things go wrong. One of the things that uh, in Enron, uh, they were doing their best to find scapegoats, finding people who could take the fall for them. They were pointing the finger at everybody else. Listen, when you do wrong, accept the blame, uh, knowing that you shouldn't have done wrong in the first place. Now, there are mistakes uh, that people make, 
And I'm all for giving people second chances. But when you knowingly do wrong, accept the blame and then accept the consequences. And speak up against acts they believe are wrong. And uh, what we saw with Enron was a whistleblower program. And this person spoke up against... uh, Uh, the company and that's what started this investigation and if this person had not spoken up who knows how far they would have gotten and how much more damage they would have caused. Now comparing ethical versus unethical leadership and as you can see uh, the ethical leader strives for fairness, possesses humility, is a servant, shows respect for each individual and we see that again with Jesus being the model for that type of um, uh, behavior and and personal characteristics. The unethical leader uh, is unfair. Uh, You can't rely on their word because they practice deception, and you know who their father is. Their father is the father of lies, Satan himself. They withhold help. Uh, They're arrogant and self-serving. So there's quite a contrast between the ethical and the unethical leader. And uh, as you see uh, uh, what the characteristics are of the ethical leader, uh, we can start to strive towards emulating uh, those, those behaviors and those types of characteristics. Now, acting as a moral leader. Business is about values and and not just economic performance. Now, that's a true statement, and many companies will state that in their mission statement and so forth, but you'd be surprised at how few companies uh, actually practice that. Uh, And you may be in management the only one who does practice uh, uh, values. Uh, So you have to be careful with some of the ways that uh, these slides present these characteristics because uh, the reality of it is companies are around to stay in business and to turn a profit. They are there to outperform their rivals and in many industries today because of competition the way it is they're cutthroat they'll do whatever they can to uh, uh, maximize their uh, profitability even if it means stepping on others. And we know that that's not an ethical uh, way of behaving, but that's just how it is uh, with many companies today. Uh, The single most factor and important factor in ethical decision-making in organizations is whether leaders show a commitment to ethics in their talk and especially their behavior. So again, you may say one thing, but your actions are going to really typify who you are. So be careful with that. Uh, Again, I've worked for Christian organizations as well as secular organizations, and unfortunately, they're all the same. You will have those who say, yes, we are Christ in uh, in this company and so forth, Uh, and I have seen Christ on the marquee and in the uh, business uh, uh, mission statement, but he's not within the halls of that organization. So just be careful when you take a look at what people say Make sure you're looking at their behaviors to see if they match up. Moral leadership is distinguishing right from wrong and doing right, seeking the just, honest, and good in the practice of leadership. And just as the devil can sneak up on you with some of the most innocent tactics, everything looks fine and so forth, be be very cautious, especially in business, because uh, the first decision that you make when you're in an ethical dilemma will pave the way for future decisions. And if you lean towards unethical uh, practices, just to be a team player and so forth, it's going to be that much easier for you to do it the next time and the next time until you find yourself in trouble. Now, there are three levels of personal moral development. Now, a guy named Lawrence Kohlberg uh, developed a stage approach to moral development. And I'm going to show you a little video on that um, uh, after this. And it'll be in in a separate uh, section in Moodle uh, on the same day and so forth. But uh, Kohlberg believed that we mature or we evolve in our moral reasoning. And as you see here, there's the pre-conventional stage, which follows rules to avoid punishment, uh, acts in its own interest, blind obedience to authority for its own sake, 
uh, this would be like the child who obeys the parents to avoid punishment. I don't want to get a spanking, so I'm going to clean up my room. You don't want to clean up your room just because it's the good thing to do or because your room is dirty. You're just going to do it because you're told to do so. And in doing so, you're acting in your own best interest because you're avoiding punishment. And you're blind to it or blind in obedience to it. You don't question. You don't offer a different route. You just go and clean up your room. Uh, now, many people today still act like, even in adulthood, their moral reasoning is, um, uh, is like that. Uh, legalists in, uh, in our religions today are like that. We, we obey because we're told to behave. It's not that we behave because Jesus died for us and we want to live our lives for Him and so forth. We want to avoid hell, so we're going to do what is right at least according to the Bible. So that would be the pre-conventional. Conventional lives up to expectations of others. They fulfill the duties and obligations of social systems by upholding laws. So really you're following the norm. You don't want to stand out from the crowd. You don't want to resist authority and so forth. Uh, so you're going to go ahead and you're going to obey the laws and you're going to be a, a responsible citizen and so forth, which all of us are. But the moral reasoning is not something that is innate, that we want to be citizens because, you know, uh, Christ said to be a good citizen. Um, render under Caesar what is Caesar's. Uh, obey the authorities and those who are put in authority over you. Um, we don't do it necessarily because of that. We do it because this is what society tells us to do. Uh, we follow along and we uphold the laws. Now the third level is post-conventional and they follow internalized universal principles of justice and right. They balance concepts for self with concern for others and the common good. They act in an independent and ethical manner uh, regardless really of what others expect of them. I'm going to do right and I'm going to do what is moral and ethical no matter what. And we see maybe back in Nazi Germany, there were some Germans who housed the Jews. It was illegal, but they knew that there was a higher principle, there was a higher good that they could maintain be, um, outside the law or what the uh, other people were doing. They were able to act independently based on their moral conviction to house and hide the Jews uh, so that the Germans wouldn't come and get them. So that would be an example of a post-conventional uh, level of moral development. But Kohlberg believed that you progressed, and some people, as we said before, they never get out of uh, some of the lower stages. There are people today who really don't know why they love Jesus or why they go to church. They've just done it all their lives, and it was expected of them. Uh, there are some today who will just follow along with authority without uh, contributing uh, input or uh, dissent or whatever. They just follow blindly. They just want to follow what other people are doing and just believe that that's right and proper to do. Uh, and hopefully you, as a mature believer, will follow the Lord and do what is right just because it is right. Uh, you have that conviction. You know what the Bible says, but you know that the Bible is not a rule book. It's not a set of do's and don'ts. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's that relationship that prompts you to do what is moral and ethical. Now, we preach that and we do that in church, but how many of us really practice that at work? Now, that's where the pressure is going to be uh, the greatest because at work you may have to go against the rules. Uh, you may have to go against what everybody in your department uh, is doing. You may have to be that lone person who stands up and says, no, this is right and this is wrong and so forth. So developing that moral ability or, or that moral maturity to where you make decisions based on who you are in Christ, 
uh, aside from what everybody else is doing or, or the Bible says to do this and don't do that, using it as a rule book, you want to do it because you have a relationship with the Lord. 